Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Miami Beat, your source for all things entertainment, where we bring you the pulse of Miami's vibrant music and cultural scene. From the salty rhythms of salsa and merengue to the energetic beats of popular music, we've got it all covered. Join us as we take you on a journey through the city's hottest clubs, festivals, events, and introduce you to the talented artists and performers who make Miami the cultural capital of the South. So sit back and relax with the Miami Beat. Now, here's your host, Renee Gim. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of Miami Beach, our weekly entertainment program uh, brought to you right here from CNN Studios in South Miami. Uh, once again, we we'll want to thank everybody for uh, going into our website and uh, seeing our videos for the past few weeks. It's been really exciting, and it's been uh, really uh, ex uh, great to see all the persons that have viewed our show. Today we have a great show. I have a great guest that I think we're going to enjoy. And uh, this time I'd like to introduce our guest for this week, Jay Missouri. Welcome, Jay. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me. Tell us a little bit about you. I mean, you're a local guy. You were mm -hmm. born here in, in Miami. And uh, tell us where you were born and where, about your heritage, please. Uh, yeah, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Uh, my parents are Haitian and Dominican descent. And um, yeah, like my my, mo my mother's a singer. She's a vocalist. Father is a vocalist and a guitar player. And uh, like growing up here, I mean, it was I would say it was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was too tough. It was rough. We had rough patches like any other person. But at the same time, it's what made me who I am today. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, born and raised in Miami, been doing this. Just travel all over the world, doing my music independently. You know, uh, there's been a lot of offers, you know, on the table, but I just felt like, you know, we just keep building the value before we really lock something in. You know? So music is in your DNA. Yeah. Uh, you can come from a, a great family of musicians, singers, right. entertainers. And uh, right. when did you start singing? When did, the, when did you decide that this was going to be what you wanted to do as a career? Honestly, I think I was in elementary school when I noticed that I knew this is what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how I was going to go about it. I'm like, look at all these people singing, but my main focus was is when I discovered a, a home video of my mom and my dad. They was in a recording studio. And, you know, growing up, you know, it was domestic violence in the house, but seeing them two together in the studio, I think that was like the happiest I seen my parents. And that's when I'm like, hey, music can make them smile like this. And that's when I knew, like, I want to do music, you know, because I want to see if I could be able to have the effect on other people as well, you know. They just let me know how powerful it is. Where'd you go to school? Miami Central. Well, elementary, Westview Elementary, then Westview Middle. Then I went to Miami Central Senior High. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you're truly a local boy. I mean, you uh, were born here. You grew up here. You uh, went to school here. Yeah, if I was in a marching band. And, and you were uh, in a marching band. Yeah. What you do in the marching band? What'd I played play? the drums. You played the drums? Yeah, we did. I was the percussionist. So we played the snare, the, uh, the, the, the bass drum, the tenors, the quads, everything. Wow. Yeah. So I, I, that, that's a great platform for you to start uh, getting into the, your right. music career. Uh, and then, uh, then after that, you started singing. But you're not only a singer, you're mm -hmm. also a composer. You write music. Yeah, and you, write music. You know, you've got some great tunes out there already mm -hmm. and all the digital platforms. Tell me about right. that. How did you get into that? Like, because uh, I guess when, when people see, listen to my music and they was like, Jay, can you, write, can you write something for me? I'm like, I've never written for anyone, really. I usually just write myself or you know, sometimes I'll have instrumentals I'm listening to and my younger brother, I'm like, hey, listen, what do you think of this? And he was like, oh, you know, sometimes my brother helped me write, you know, because I'm like, you know, hey, great minds, you know, we put two brains together, that's making an amazing record, you, you get what I'm saying? So over time, that's when people start sending me stuff. I'm like, you know, I could write something for you, and I see that I've been giving people some some good records. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm good at this as well. This could be another side thing that I do as far as compose a song for other artists. You know? Tell me about your style of music, because you, you, you sent me some information about mm -hmm. you, and you say that you sing R&B, trap, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're also into freestyle now. Right. So tell me about uh, the type of music that you really like to uh, sing and uh, perform. Music that that's pretty much got me started was R&B because uh, Boyz II Men was like that group. I always thought I was going to be in a boys, boy band, like a boy group, harmonies and stuff like that. Because growing up to Boyz II Men, 112, Brian McKnight, people like that. And I always said, that's what I want to do. But I never had any 
group of guys who kind of see the same vision. You know, I had my older brother. He was a singer as well, but he was like, hey, I got kids. I can't do this music stuff. And I was like, okay. You know, years later, I had a kid, but I'm still doing this music stuff. I'm like, I guess, you know, one, we just more passionate about it. You get what I'm saying? But um, I started off with R&B because it's like the love songs, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the bedroom music, then, you know, stuff that can make people feel again because I feel like – not knocking any songs now. I got a lot of amazing songs out now, but I felt like that where it was more emotional. Like you could see it in their face. Like you feel their pain. You, you can get when they want someone or they losing someone. Yeah. You know, so I was like, man, like R&B is everything. But that's when I like freestyle. It was a gentleman, like he passed away, God rest his soul. It was a gentleman um, who I, I was familiar with because he saw I was doing a lot of local events in Miami. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, your voice is amazing. Your voice is amazing. I'm like, yeah. He's, he said, man, I say, are you looking to manage anyone? Because he was working with Johnny O. Oh, wow. And everyone knows Johnny O. He, of matter of fact, he was Johnny O's uh, personal trainer. So, um, and I, was, I seen like he was on, on the move a lot. And I'm like, man, like you're real connected with this. I say, are you looking to manage any other artists? Because I got a lot going on. I just, now I need someone to kind of structure it a bit because I don't want to wear too many hats. Mm -hmm. Then he was like, oh no, I'm too busy. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I see you with Johnny O. Y'all all over the city, all the U.S. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Let me keep doing what I'm doing. And I started building momentum and he uh, eventually he started coming like, hey, listen, you ready for a manager? I said, no, nah, I don't need a manager anymore. <laughs> I said, I got this. I got this fan base. We done grew this fan base. Like, I'm excited. And he was like, no, listen, why don't you try to incorporate your R&B with freestyle? I'm like, what is freestyle? And he was like, uh, this. He played it. And I'm like, oh, party music? I say, on Power 96, DJ Lies. Like, he, <laughs> yeah. used to, he used to play this. He was like, it's not called party music. It's called freestyle music. Freestyle, that's right. And I say, okay. I say, I could do this. You know, and then we did one song, but it was just like a, a test. Mm -hmm. It was called um, Anymore. We did one song. And then he said, I'm going to just put it out, Jay. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't work like that. We got to do distribution. Let's do this. He said, like, no, no, no. I just want the community of the people to see what you about to do. And I said, you know what, okay, you know how this works in this particular genre, so go for it. And we put out like a 45 second clip of it and people, it was, I can't even explain, I can't even compare it to how everything just can't, it was like a magnetic pull. They put it out and everything just boom. Came together. Yeah, everyone's like, who are you, who are you, who are you? They start going crazy. And it was like, James, who, who, who? I'm like, whoa, I say, this is freestyle music? And I started listening to it, I'm like, they love this, you know, <laughs> like, and I'm seeing the response of the people, the comments, the shares in the in the streams. And that's when it kind of like, OK, let me not let me step outside the box a little bit. Let me not keep sticking to R&B. Sure. So that's when I say, give me more of this freestyle music and let me see, I could do some more. Right. So that's when he, we connected with a, a producer in Germany. His name is Tanasi. Uh, so I saw the Tanasi out there. So you're taking your uh, music all the way from Miami, and born and raised in Miami, and then all of a sudden you you end up in Germany. Yeah, wow, well, what a what a drastic change. Yeah, I, I was not expecting it, and um, to, and we did everything digitally. And Tanasi was like, I love your voice. I want to work with you. I'm looking to work with with the artist, like and just like take it there. I'm like, okay, like let's let's see it. It, it wouldn't hurt. He said, can we do a project? I'm like, let's do a project, you know. And then um, he emailed me all everything and. I started writing, then I told my brother, listen, this is what I'm doing. And he, my brother was kind of skeptical. He was like, okay, I'll help you write to it, too. So me and my brother in the, in the, in the room, we brainstormed, we write into every single record that he sent to us. And then once we started recording everything and we started putting it out there, it's like the way the people re responded to it was ridiculous, you know? And um, all of a sudden, they called me the Prince of Freestyle. You're the Prince of Freestyle. You're the Prince of Freestyle. So you're the Prince of Freestyle in Miami now? So is that Period. <laughs> yeah, the Prince of Freestyle. It don't matter from Texas, Miami, Los Angeles, New York. They said when they Atlanta, hear Prince of Freestyle, you're in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm in right? Atlanta. Yeah. So when they hear Prince of Freestyle, they like, oh, it's that black guy, Jay Mazur. It's Jay Mazur. Yeah. yeah you, go. you know. So it's oh, been a wonderful of, title to to, right. to to have a coin, but right, right. It. That's right. And and so when we, I have certain events that I attend. So when I see people like Johnny O, say the Prince of Freestyle, and he say, man, I love your voice. He said, I'm, I'm a big fan. I say. These people, all these 10,000 people go crazy over you, and you're a fan of me. And he was like, yes, man, your voice is so strong, man. Said, and then I run into Stevie B. Mm -hmm. And they consider Johnny O. Stevie B like one of the kings of freestyle. So I run into Stevie B, and he came, Jay Mazur. I was like, huh? I was like, okay. like, And I started doing my homework more because a lot of the artists, I didn't know who was the big artist in, in freestyle because I'm used to R&B, hip-hop, and things like that. Right. So when I started doing my homework, then I ran into Lisa Lisa. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. And she came and she said, this young guy here, you're going to take over our genre. We're going to pass you the baton because you're just what freestyle needed. You, you're you going to revive freestyle. I said, y'all, y'all putting, I said, y'all, y'all giving me that responsibility. It's like, yes, because your voice is too strong. Like, you're very soulful. I said, yeah, I need people to feel again, you know? So when I started incorporating that emotional feel to the, to the dance music, everyone just started just, James, the fan base started growing. Like, it's, it almost felt overnight, but it definitely wasn't because I've been putting in work 10 plus years independently. But just seeing Let me take you back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right? Tell me. Tell me how it felt to be the very first time that you performed publicly on a stage. What was that like? Scary. It was definitely scary for all the new artists who's coming up. Like, you have to break out of that. Cause, but I think what made me more comfortable is seeing. Do you how, recall what that performance was? Yeah, it was. Um, you remember what was that place in um that we perform at Sandals? It was a place called Sandals. Uh, it was like in uh, a little Haiti area. There was right. a couple local promoters who was always doing like open mics. Right. And Sandals was one of the first places I performed. And I was always like, oh, man, like I was too big or maybe they're not going to really like like how I sing because my older brother was a singer. Everyone used to always compliment him. And it was like, oh, no, nah, that fat kid, he don't know how to sing. You know, like <laughs> and I used to be like, OK, let me keep practicing, you know. And then we performed at Sandals and my brother one night said he can't make it. You have to sing by yourself. And I was like, I don't know how to sing by myself. <laughs> like I'm used to like you being on stage with me. So it kind of make me less nervous. And he like me, you just got to sing by yourself. And then I'm like, you know, let me just let me just do it. And when I sang and I seen how the women responded to me, I was like, huh. Let me keep doing this. Let me keep doing this. And I started growing. Like, over time, I started growing, started getting better with time. And now it's like I can get in front of 10,000 people and I will, you know, I will, I will go ahead and rock the house. Well, I would like to, at this time, share with the audience uh, one of your great tunes so they can see okay. the true quality of your voice and, and how you perform. Andre, would you please uh, play All Through the Night for us, please? Phenomenal tune. Anything. Was that one of your very first recordings? No, no, not even. One of my first recordings was uh, Anymore and Tell Me You Love Me. That was one of them. And Those were the first ones, yeah. yeah. And Born to Love. Those was one of the first. Um, all Through the Night was like probably like last year, you know. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people gravitate towards that song as well. Yeah, I know. It's a phenomenal song. But thank you, thank one of the things that is really interesting about your career, and one of the things that I'm really impressed with, is your ability to. You, you're a complete. Not only are you a, you're a complete artist, but you're a complete marketing team. You do right. everything. Yeah, you right. upload your music. You get it on all the digital platforms. Mm-hmm. You handle all your uh, marketing digi- or your uh, social media. Right. Tell us about that. How did how did you get into that? Well, it started off because um, we had teamed up with a, a a video team at first. It was a, a camera crew. They said, "Hey guys, we want to work with you, and we'll just do all your videos." And when they seen the talent that I had and my younger brother had. It was like, um, listen, we just decided we're going to do a, a marketing company, but we're going to focus solely on you guys. But over time, while they doing trial and errors, we're doing from YouTube ads and Instagram ads, Facebook ads. We started learning all the marketing, the Google crawling and how to get your, your, your online presence together. And I was just like, I was always intrigued by it. I'm like, man, I want to learn how to really put your, it's like putting a product in the, in the, in the face of the audience. So I was, and I started learning all the lingos and I seen what was what. And over time, I was just like, hey, what does this do? And what does that do? And what does that do? And then I started doing a lot of research on my own. I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff. Like, I, I found out that that's like the heartbeat to music, to be able to get it out there. It's like, you could have a thousand songs, but if you don't have a marketing campaign, it's not going to go anywhere. No one's going to hear it. Well, the music industry has 
changed drastically over the mm-hmm. course of the last just even four or five years. Right. Uh, and even prior to that, when the, everything went from CDs to digital, to and digital. now mm-hmm. everything's on digital platforms. So mm-hmm. how did that affect you when you first started? Did you did you first start doing CDs and uh, yep. and distributing them and trying to get them yep. in the hands of everybody to see if they were playing? Every show, I was I had a stack of CDs. I was going uh, from store to store, going to the flea market. Uh, we going to the gas station, posting up flyers. And I honestly feel like when things went digital, it, it it made artists a bit lazy, but it was way more efficient because the marketing campaign is what kind of just put it in their faces instead of having to actually do the footwork and things right. like that. So the digital thing was kind of like a it was kind of like a plus when you think about it. But I feel like it just took the essence out of like physically you're burning the CDs and you're writing with the market. Cause we used to put on the market, put it in the plastic sleeve, go walking up to the radio stations, the DJs, and hey, listen to my my music and things like that. And autographing them, autographing for, for the audience. It, yeah, creating inserts. Like we used to do the whole process, you know. So I think that's what it just made it made it just made you appreciate it more as an artist. Like, man, it was really hard work, but now everything's digital. It makes it way much easier. As long as you got a right marketing campaign or you even have the right influencer to back you, like, you can be able to take off because it's like, the, it depends that one song is pretty much like hitting the lottery. Sure, you know? absolutely. I want to share with the audience uh, another song that you did. When did you when did you record this, I Was Born to Love You? How long? Born to Love, that was literally shortly, that was probably maybe my my third or fourth song that I recorded and I recorded that uh, before no a little bit after Tell Me You Love Me and I released that by myself because the the gentleman in Tanasi in Germany he he gave me the record and he was like Jay I want you to do this he said but do you want to put it out as your own thing your own single I said absolutely because I think with my marketing strategy I can do way more bigger things with it which it got thousands and thousands over 20, 30, 40,000 streams just on um, on YouTube alone so I put that out there and people just, they ate that song up so much. And even the recording process, I pretty much cried in the studio when I recorded it because a lot of things, I'm like, I've, like I like I experienced a lot of things that I was singing about. And at the same time, again, I like, I like, I want people to feel, you know, when they listen to my music. So like a lot of people here born to love, they either cry, like people who meet me and from New York and Philly, when they meet me in person, they literally start bursting in tears. And sometimes I question it like, why? You know, and they say, man, you changed my life. Like people saying, I brought him back from a coma. My song brought him back from a coma, you know, and like they're in ICU and then nurses playing it throughout the whole hospital. And I'm like, man, like it does my heart good to know my, my music could give you that effect. I'm talking about people who's leading platoons in the army saying, yo, your music got me through this particular ser- time that I was in the service. And I'm like, really? Those are you amazing know, so, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had the pleasure of meeting you about, uh, what was it, three or four months ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in a, another, another recording studio, studio right. and... Uh, one of the things that truly impressed me about you, Jay, was the fact that when you, they asked you to sing live, you, right. I think you drank, you sang uh, a cappella uh, right, on right. the show. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that was so impressive was that you had everybody in the studio singing with you. Right. They were singing along with you. They were singing a song. Right. They knew it. And right. it, it just motivated them to do that. Right, so right, you right. bring out some of the great things in the audience that, uh, you know, that the, when the audience hears your songs, you bring out these great feelings from Absolutely. them. And I can, I can understand what you're saying about all of these situations that have happened before. Right, right because it's like when people, when I walk into a room, I, I feel like I, I step in with an aura. Like, I'm, I'm a positive person. You know, no one's perfect. And, you know, no one's perfect. We all have our flaws. But I always try to bring good energy. And I always, like, I'm a type of person. Like, I want people to feel good. I want people to leave with a, a positive thought in their mind when they walk out the room with me. Or just, like, hopefully, like, if you had a bad day or meeting Jay Mazur, it kind of just my day became better, you know, because we already know this world is already messed up. I want to be one less person to make, you know, to make it, you know, messed up like that. So I always try to bring good energy in everything I do and everything I touch. So this this next song that I'm going to ask Andre to play for us is called I Was Born to Love You. Mm-hmm. And uh, how did how did that, uh, how did you compose that? What did you, what, what came out of that? So what made you uh, bring that out and uh, and write it? What what came into your mind? It, it's, my writing process is that when someone sends me a production, I feel like the beat sings to me. The beat tells me, Jay, this is what you're going to sing on here. Like, I don't write it first and then <clears> listen to a beat and mesh it. I listen to the beat and I'm starting like, hmm. I said, I feel like this is what it's telling me to do. I need to say this, and this is how I need to sing it. This is how I need to do it. And that's when I started. We, we went ahead, did the writing to it, got in the studio maybe late, the very next day. It probably took me maybe an hour to to, to co- compose that. 
got in the studio um, the very next day with my engineer Troy Murray and I just started we started going in we started doing our thing and I, but I felt it at the same time because we know we're all we're born to love we're not born to hate or be able to do all this all this crazy stuff's going on in the world the killings and stuff so I'm like man listen man, even relationships man we're born to love originally that's you know, absolutely we're, right we're, Andre so, would you uh, queue up uh, I was born to love you please so that the audience can enjoy it yeah it's a vibe here yeah. I really love that song. Thank you, thank you, thank when you. I first heard about you, and I, I went online and started looking up all your music, mm-hmm. and this is one of the ones that really, really, truly, you know, I, I felt an right. inspiration to be able right. to listen to it. Right. So I listened to it over and over and over again. <laughs> and said, wow, what a great song! Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's a great, great, great song. Thank so you. you have a lot of things going on in your career right now. You're you're extremely active. Right. Uh, tell me about what are you doing? I mean, I just. You, you've been traveling all throughout the country, and you have a lot of stuff uh, planned for the future. You have some concerts. Yeah. Uh, let's tell the audience about what uh, what you've been doing and what you're planning on doing. Yeah, right now we got a lot of concerts lined up. June 24th um, is a concert I put together with two other uh, 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 um, investors within that city in, the local, in, in Orlando, Florida. So they were like, Jay, we got to put something together to put a concert and everything like that. So June 24th at the Abbey is going to be in um, downtown Orlando. <clears throat> Uh, we got tickets on sale now on TicketLeap.com. Uh, we're going to be performing. I end up bringing out a few other artists, friends that I have. You know, it's like, hey, let's book him, 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 him. We're going to get their flight. We're going to get their hotel. We're going to come together, and we're going to do one big, big old concert. So um, June 24th, again, that's Orlando, Florida at the Abbey. And then July 9th, I'll be in um, Wildwood, New Jersey. So uh, we're going to be with DJ Slice and alongside Coro, Johnny O., uh, Deneen, a few um, K7 from TKA, so uh, I'm gonna be alongside with them, and we're gonna be performing out there as well. But um, we got a lot of shows coming up. I plan on doing a lot of my own personal concerts because, as an independent artist, you want to be able to be hands on and know the whole process, the whole production side. You know. Please tell me that you're gonna be planning to do some some concerts and some performances here in, in South Miami. Florida. This please. is my home. I'm definitely going to do course. something right here. Like, yeah, so there's, so there's a lot when of... When do you plan to do that? That I'm doing it before the year is over. That's oh, for please. sure. Because we have a few other cities from Connecticut, New York, Philly. They're like, in Chicago, they're like begging, like, Jake, come out here. I'm like, you know what? I got to, let me get you guys out of the way. And then from there, we're going to bring it on home, you know, before the year is over. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, uh, we definitely would love to have you back on the show. Absolutely. Tell us about uh, all your... Uh, upcoming concert dates and the locations uh, etc so I'm sure the audience is going to uh, want to join you and uh, buy the tickets and be there nah, uh, for that performance yeah the support so, is tremendous out what, there. what uh, you, you, you just came back from Atlanta I mean you called you 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 call me from Atlanta. Right. Were you up there performing? Were you recording? Or no, we're out, we was out there just building. You know, as far as marketing, just building a relationship with a few people out there from radio station DJs and things like that. So it's like, which I'm actually just trying to, I'm trying to test the ground to, to see. Okay, are you guys familiar with freestyle music? You know, because I went to a lot of skating rinks in Atlanta, you know, just like I literally do a lot of the footwork, a lot of footwork. So we're going to the skating rinks and I noticed that the skating rink has a major community and they love freestyle music. But as well as that, I do R&B, so I know there's a lot of people out there. Is, so that, just, with. is that regular skating or rice skating? No, regular skating. Regular roller skating. skating. Yeah. Roller skating, the quads roller as skating. the blades oh. and... 
my my song is playing at almost every single rink right now in Atlanta, in Georgia. Period. If there's a skating rink, the, all the DJs who's in the skating rink are playing my song right now. That's so I'll I, I stay in the back and kind of watch the crowd and everyone's pulling out their phone to Shazam and trying to say, oh, who is this? And I'll just be sitting there, okay, yeah, I like that. All right, cool, you know? But they respond very well to it. So when I go in the skating rings, they like, oh, I get an autograph? Can I get a picture? Can I get this? I'm like, yeah, okay. And do they, do, does the audience recognize you when you are come into these uh, skating rings or yeah, locations lady, and all that? Before, they would just, they would just skate. Now, when they walk in, oh, it's Jay Mazur. You know, so now it's like a lot of people pull out their phone, they want to take pictures. I'm like, hey, let's go. And they say, oh, you should skate. I don't know how to skate, but I got music that could, you know, make y'all skate. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Sure. But yeah. But well, right now, that's what we've been out there just trying to touch the people out there to try to expand the, uh, the, the brand, you know. So have you done that, uh, that that type of promotional work here in the South Florida area as well? Do you go around to skating rings and uh, I haven't clubs? Done, and if, Yeah, Miami, that's what I started off. Like, I feel like I got to practice out here because I was almost at every club with my brother. It was almost every day. It don't matter if it was a Monday. It was in every single club. We'd come with, with book bag full of flyers, CDs, everything. So... It started off out here, and then we just kind of took everything we learned out here and just started expanding it from New York to Philly and all things like that. Just try to like build a name and build a brand, you know. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. Tell me about uh, t- tell me about your, your your little brother. I know he's he's here in the studio with us, but he's not ready to come on camera right now because yeah. he didn't know that uh, I, I didn't know that he right. was going to be joining it today. <laughs> but tell me about your little brother. What? Tell me his name and uh, yeah, cause I mention him a lot, huh? Yeah, yeah. you do. Cause, cause <laughs> like, he seems to be a sensational uh, artist as yeah, well. Yeah, my, my little brother. He's he's more than my little brother. He's my he's my friend. My he's my right hand. He's. He's he's a little bit of everything, you know what I'm saying? And like we we've been through a lot together, you know, from when we lost my our mom and everything and we hold each other down mentally, you know, we hold each other down physically. And he's a hip hop artist. His name is Ripper the Kid. That's R I P P A D A K I D. And you listen to his music, man, his wordplay is ridiculous, you know, and people are familiar with who he is as well, from Miami to Atlanta to New York. So they say, Oh, you Ripper the Kid, oh I know you I love this song. I love this, I love that. So and like he has a lot of inspirational music and he's not just like an average, oh, he's rapping about street drugs and stuff like that. Like, he has r- conscious music, too, that, that can make you think, you know? So, like, Riff with the Kid, that's someone y'all should definitely follow as well. That's my younger brother. That's not my stepbrother. No, that's my blood that's your brother. Blood, yeah. In the same household, same mother, same father, everything. So you're, um, you're going to keep that legacy going, you know, absolutely. between you and uh, and your younger brother. You know, you're going to keep that musical legacy going uh, throughout the South Florida. And we pass is, he, it on. is your younger brother performing right now in South Florida as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And a majority of the time, and, and because of certain songs, he helped me He helped me write. So if I'm like, for example, the song that I'm going to be doing, um, the concert we got on the 24th, you know, he's going to be there. I'm like, he's going to be like, and he's humble with it because he's a rapper, but he's going to be like, yeah, but I'm my brother's hype man. So I'm going to back him up on stage. You know what I'm saying? Just like if he was rapping, Mm -hmm. they know me. Oh, he's a singer. But listen, I'm a ripper's. (laughs) I'm his hype man. I'm back him up on stage. So if he's losing breath, I'm going to help him catch it so he can catch his breath back to say the next line. You get me? So we just pretty much sharpen each other. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Jay, it's, it's it's been truly a pleasure having you here on our show today. Hey, I, I appreciate you having me. I'm yeah, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. Please tell the audience how they can listen to your music, about all the digital platforms, your website, everything, so they can follow you, because your music is really Thank phenomenal. You. Uh, you could definitely, you could find me, literally, you go on Google and just Google Jay Mazor, that's J-A-E-M-A-Z-O-R, or you could literally just go on my website, jmazormusic.com. Again, that's jmazormusic.com, and I'm on all streaming platforms phones you can think about from Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Tidal Music. Uh, you tell Alexa, play Jay Mazzura. Everything's going to pop up. It'll all be there. Everything will be there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It's, it's been really a great pleasure having the Jay here on the show with us today. Just want to give you a brief uh, 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 update on what we got coming up. We have some phenomenal shows coming up. I have the pleasure of having DJ Alex Gutierrez, who's a, a very known commodity here in the South Florida area as far as music is concerned, and Dr. Ed Kaye, who you will really, truly enjoy. That's my professor from yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah. Ed is the saxophone phenomenal. He's going to be on our show Grammy in a couple Award of weeks. Winner. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Ed Kaye. So now I'd like to ask Andre to close the show with this phenomenal song that uh, Jay has uh, recorded that has really been, you know, it hit all the platforms and has been, it's, it's had a tremendous success. It was number so one Andre, on the please, charts. please yeah. close the show now with Tell Me You Love Me by Jay Mazur.
Tell me you love me. 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 Tell me